Hi, Steve King here. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a, a fun little trick that allows you to take part of one image and put it into another image. Let me show you what I mean. The image on the left is an HOO version of the uh, bubble nebula, lobster claw nebula, and I think this is M52. I did an SHO version of it, but really the only part of the SHO that I like better is the lobster claw. And maybe it brings out a little blue in here. But really the lobster claw is a part. So I'd like to retain image one, except I'd like to insert the lobster claw from image two. So here's how we do it. First, we're going to align these two images because clearly they're not uh, matched images. So we go to star alignment. Image one is the one I want to retain. So I want to register image two. So I just put image one up in the reference image and then I drop it on to image two. Okay, now we can get rid of the original image two and we can rename this now as image two. Delete, okay. So now we want to create a mask and I'm gonna use the game script and so Script, Utilities, Game. If you don't have this script, I would highly recommend it. It allows you to make masks very easily, uh, odd-shaped masks, which are almost impossible to make any other way. I'm going to move this around and expand it a little bit. OK. I'm going to look at image two, so that's selected here, image two. And you can either make an elliptical mask or a multipoint. So let me show you both. Oh, well, before I forget, uh, gradient mask is one at the center and linearly goes to zero at the edges. That's not what I want. What I want is what they call a binary mask. Whatever mask area I describe, it'll be one inside that area and zero outside. So we've got ellipses selected. Let's just add one. So it puts an ellipse in here and you can grab this ellipse. You can move it. You can grab any one of these four handles and expand and rotate. And so if you have a round target, you can easily select it with this tool. But our target isn't really round. The blue nebulosity goes out a ways over here. That stretches us well out into here. And then up here, I'm missing some down here. So this isn't the one I want. So I'm going to click Delete, gets rid of it. And I'm going to choose their multi-point and add one. And now you click three points to start with. So I'm going to click one over here at the edge of where I want it. Click another one here. I'm going to click a third one here. The green line, not the straight lines, but this curved line is the mask that it's going to generate. So I need to be careful. I don't get too close to the edges of the uh, image here, or I'll pick up some of this black outside, the black up in this area, and I don't want that because I'm going to blur this image. Okay, so we're coming around here. This is doing okay. So just click another point on the line, gives you a point, and then you can drag it over to where you want it. Click another point on the line, grab it, Drag it over to where you want it. 
Okay, that's contouring nicely. I'll come down here. That's oh, not going too badly, actually. Okay, so the green reasonably is getting a blue. I don't want to get too close to the black edge because I don't want any black to get in here when I blur it. So we may want to move this out just a little bit here to get this blue. Okay. A little blue down here, so let's go ahead and pick that up. Okay. So I've now defined a shape that encloses what I want. And if I wanted to get tricky, I come in here, but I don't need to. And now I just hit OK. And it's created the mask. Now, like most masks, you don't want a sharp edge on it. So I open convolution. And I'm going to blur it a little bit. Actually, that looks pretty good. So here's no blurring. So I want to blur it a little so it'll blend nicely with the, uh, when I put one image into the other. So that looks OK. Just enough little blur there. Drag this onto here, blur it. OK. Now I'm going to rename this instead of image two underline bin. That's too much typing. I'm just going to name it small m for mask. Okay, let's tuck him down here. Now we open pixel math. And I have the expression in here already. The mask where it's white, so m is the mask where it's white, it will select image two. So it'll select the area up here around the blue claw where we put the, um, the mask. But it's black everywhere else, so it won't see any of the rest of this image. The rest of the image will be picked up, be picked up by one minus M, which inverts the mask. So it won't get any of this claw, but it'll pick up everything else outside over here. So I want to create a new image. I'm going to call it combined. That's what we're doing, combining them. I always click the RGB color space. Then you just hit the, uh, the square apply button and voila. So let's close this. So let's open up image one. So this is the one I like, except for the claw region here. With image two, oops, there we go. And we can come switch between. So here's the original image one, which I like, but it doesn't have the, the blue up in the claw or over in this region. But if I go to the combined image, it does. So we've combined the two images. And if I enhance this and look in closer, you can see you just really can't tell where it's been blended. And if there is any difference when you blend them together, you can put the mask back on and use uh, curves usually to blend the two images together if you need any adjustment in the uh, black level or any shading of the background. In this case, it seems to blend in just perfectly and there's no issue. So I hope you enjoyed that. I doubt if you'll need it very often, but when you do need it, I hope it works for you. Thanks for watching.